It's lovely to be back in Britain. Yeah, it is great. Yeah. It's been five years. It's too long. Britain's like an aunt to us, a kindly aunt. Makes us roast meals, gives us lollies. It's been really fun. Yeah, it's great. We played the Hammersmith Apollo. Beautiful old venue. Yep, and not one audience member told us to get a taxi, which is a so common heckle in London when you get up on stage. People go, get a taxi, call a cab. Well, the radio show was brilliant in terms of developing the ideas because we'd, we'd been performing on stage live and we hadn't really tried to do a narrative show. So that was the kind of challenge of the radio show was to do a half hour narrative. I think radio was a good place to, to start because it's sort of a safer format to make mistakes on. You know, you could make mistakes along the way and you, you could re-record them very easily if, it, if something didn't work. Because yeah. it was literally just a mini disc player and a little microphone. And I was just doing that same symbol for mini like disc. That. That's the code for yeah. It's a microphone. Yeah. I think we kind of figured out how to make the band stories work. So when we came to the TV show, we had a pretty sort of, we had a, a clearer idea of what we needed to do. What, what you can't tell us, listening to the radio show, when we would say we're at the, the tower, we would actually be at the tower. Yeah, that was a great time. Well, Brett was uh, acting as though he had a, an arrow lodged in his shoulder. Yeah, that was a good challenge. He had to scream out <coughs> in the middle of a very... Busy uh, tourist sort yeah. of square. A bow and arrow? Watch this. No! I don't see that you're oh. bloody... An arrow fires into the hot London sky like a wooden rocket, with Brett transfixed below. Oh! Idiot. There was quite a lot of terrorism awareness at the time. I think people were, were quite an edgy they time. They were a little scared, yeah. I remember it. We, we, we did quite a few takes of that. I think so. Perhaps seven. Took you a while to warm up. Yeah. Like, to ah! The, yeah, to, get the, to, to make it realistic. I think we did a scene with Nina Conti with um, the um, threesome, a threesome scene about um, the band uh, being, offered a, spit being roast. offered a spit roast by a fan. And uh, she didn't know what it was. I had to explain to her on the phone what that was when she was asking what the scene's going to be. And then when we did act the scene out, it was genuinely awkward. I was wondering if you wanted to play uh, American Doubles. Do you like... Do you mean tennis? Mm. Um, no, not tennis, like a dinner tripod? game. Tripod? Uh, triangles. Uh, oh god, I don't know how else to put it. She means threesome. Sexual sort of thing. Oh, like rock and roll. Yeah. You know, like the two Ronnies used to do. There were a lot of, there were so many good times. It's just. Solid good which times. Which ones? Which ones to think about, to remember? Oh, well, it was the first time we worked with Reese Darby. Brett and I would write out the scenes and then we'd act out those and we, we'd give um, Reese's lines by um, we're writing a band agenda with a couple of jokes for each, uh, That's right. for each thing. So we'd, we'd give them a list. It said band meeting. And it, um, doing the roll call and um, and that was a we continued doing that for the TV show really it was a style yeah. that worked pretty well to feed Reese like one joke or the idea of a joke and then let him improvise and bring it to life band meeting Jermaine yep Brett yep Brian present here's your printouts for tonight's historical bridge tour was mm. it tonight yep so we've got a lot of good bridges to see tonight no I'm supposed to be on a date tonight a date you're going on a date. You no. knew we had this lined up. Oh, I didn't realise it was tonight. When did you meet a girl? The pie shop. I thought it was weird you were always at the pie shop. It's not going to be the same with just Jermaine and I. Yeah, I, I don't know if I can go either, Brian. What have you got on? A date. We developed a pilot for NBC with the manager character who was an American. And then when HBO offered us the pilot, we, we sort of begged them to let us have Reese in it uh, because we knew it was such a good... Uh, dynamic for those band meetings. He hadn't done any TV really, they only had a couple of photos of him and, and then we, we some said, dinosaur impressions. We it said, wasn't enough to go yeah, by. We, we said, oh no, we've done this radio play and they were very, they didn't really know what a radio play was. They were pretty confused by that. Lucky yeah, in, in America that died, died out in the 50s. Wouldn't be, wouldn't be doing comedy at all if it went for it. Um, BBC shows like Blackadder. No, yeah, Blackadder, I mean, that was a huge influence on us, yeah. 
the young ones, is that, I mean, like every show was BBC. Everyone back home in New Zealand was like, wow, BBC, that's a big deal, you know, and then, which it is a big deal, but then we get there and it's really just some shitty offices and pretty so run down. Government. Like a government department. department. Yeah. And then there's the BBC tea rooms where you get to go if you're working for the BBC. And so we'd have lunch in these kind of, they smelled a bit like um, the lunches. boiled the cabbage. Cabinet. The people also smelled a little minging, as you would say. But BBC was, was great to work there. It was brilliant to work there. Yeah, it was, um, yeah, it was a dream come true. It was a cabbagey dream come true. <laughs>